Ever kill one? Yeah. Is it hard? Knowing they were people once? I'm taking you with me. We can just keep our histories to ourselves. You don't tell anyone about your condition. We try to keep you alive. You're not immune from being ripped apart. Frank, we will never have friends because there are no friends to be had. Just because life stopped for you doesn't mean it has to stop for me. There's no halfway with this. We finish what we started. Hey guys, welcome to Storybook TV. My name is JT. I'm here to talk about The Last of Us Season 1 on HBO. I loved this season. I was a huge fan of The Last of Us video games. I still am. And when I heard they were making a television show, I was so excited for it. And this show was amazing. Let's talk about this. First, I want to talk about the characters themselves before we talk about the plot because these characters are awesome. This is one thing the show did really well is establishing these characters and I absolutely loved it. We're gonna talk about every single one of them. Maybe not all of them, but for the most part, we're gonna talk about the main ones. First off is Joel. I loved how Joel wasn't this almost hero, and he was this anti-hero, and he started off as this man who lost his daughter and became broken, and throughout the story, you saw him not really wanting to bring anybody in close, and by the end of it, he allowed this little girl in his heart that he saw as a daughter. And I loved how Ellie, on the other hand, became this sort of symbol of hope. Ellie was the cure to all humanity. She also was the cure for Jolt's heart. So time heals all wounds, I guess. It wasn't time that did it. One of the things that I really loved, in fact, my favorite episode this season was Endure and Survive, because I think that explains Ellie so beautifully, because she even says it, she's lost everybody. She's lost so many people in her life, but she keeps on going, and she keeps on hoping and, and, and having faith that someone will, again, be close with her, and I love this sort of childlike faith that she just had. Talking about some of the side characters, specifically Tess, I love their relationship that Tess and Joel had, and I love how they didn't make it complicated. I love how it wasn't really explained if they were friends, or if they were more than friends, and they didn't need to explain it because they were an apocalypse, and they simply were just two people that were able to fill a role in each other's lives in the time where they needed each other. And I love how they didn't make it complicated because every story needs a romantic character and I love how she was just a good friend. Or more than friends, you don't know, but I love that. Same, same thing with Tommy. I think Tommy was one of those characters that was also so different from Joel, but you saw a lot of Joel and Tommy and vice versa. I think one of the conversations I loved the most was when Joel was talking with Tommy and he just started to break down and you figure out why Joel doesn't want to continue to be with Ellie because he is terrified that she is going to die in the same way that Sarah died and it's what brought up that conversation to where Ellie's like you know I'm not hurt right and Joel's like what are you talking about I, I, I love that conversation and, and, and to have Tommy play a role in that there is just such a brotherly bond that these two characters have that even though they keep on fighting, they always are there for each other. And it's just a great storytelling. I wanna talk about episodes three and seven really quick. I have said before, and I'm not gonna make an excuse for this show as much as I do love it, that The Walking Dead loves to set aside a whole episode to talk about a whole B plot. And I don't really like how they have those contained episodes. It feels like filler and it feels like 
they are wasting time when they could be looking into other things. I would have much rather loved to see Bill and Frank scattered throughout the first three episodes instead of meeting them and then they just die. I liked the character Bill. I wasn't a big fan of Frank. It's more just so because I found his character to be... It felt weird how quickly he was just like, oh yeah, I trust this total stranger and I'm coming into his house. Well, Bill on the other hand, it makes more sense, I would say. But I think one of the interesting things about Bill is that he started off as similarly to Joel as I'm not wanting to open up, but slowly was able to do so, even if they were just friends or they were more than friends, just the simple act of them opening up to each other. I think that was great. I just didn't like how it was all contained and it took up an entire episode. We got maybe five, 10 minutes of Joel and Ellie. 95% of the show was about them. And again, the story itself wasn't bad, but the episode itself, if I can skip an entire episode and have the story make sense and feel like there's nothing, no filler or anything, I feel like that's bad storytelling. And I know a lot of people are gonna disagree with me because they love this episode. I didn't hate this episode. I just think it wasn't important. I'm not gonna say that episode seven wasn't important, but I don't think they needed to spend an entire episode striving away from the main storyline. Even though that's how it was in the game, I feel like you can, there are things that worked in the game that you didn't need to do in the show. Um, and I'm gonna try my best not to compare game to story. But in this particular thing, I feel that having the entire episode with it mainly being Ellie and Riley hurt the episode flow a lot. And that's like one thing about this season that I will talk about now that we're kind of done talking about characters is the pacing of the show. The pacing of the show was all over the place. I would have loved to see more of Sam and Henry. Oh, Sam and Henry. These two characters were my favorite. My favorite episode was Endure and Survive. And it was because of these characters. These characters were amazing. I love the relationship that Sam and Henry had. They had such a great relationship. I love Henry and I love just everything that Henry had to like do in order to like endure and survive and how he was such a strong kid. But at the end of the day, he was also a kid. And I love the relationship that Ellie and Sam had and that they were just being kids. I like how it wasn't a romantic thing and they weren't trying to be flirty, but they were just kids wanting to be kids. And they were so great. It took its time, it took its pace, it knew its moments and it hit it right. And it, it knew how to stay away and go to a B plot and then come back to Joel and Ellie. Because you saw in the beginning, it would focus on Sam and Henry and they would go to them. And I loved that. The majority of this season did not have a B plot at all. And when it did, it was all B plot. But I loved how in this episode, it went back and forth between the two different things. And you saw things from both characters' perspectives. It was brilliant and I wished there were more episodes like this episode. This was by far my favorite episode. That being said, I think that they still rushed the main story arc of this. I would have loved to spend more time with these characters and not just every single character that comes in, they end up dying in the same, if not the next episode. And I know like that's the whole point, like in this apocalypse. Here's the thing, the characters in this show are so amazing. I think the show really cheated itself in trying to rush to get to the finish line that it didn't say, hey, Sam and Henry, these are really great characters. We can spend four episodes on this storyline, really diving into these characters, really getting to know these characters, and it's gonna make their death that much more impactful, and we are going to feel for Ellie's pain that much more that is going to make, by the time we get to the end, that much more impactful and that much more heavy and that much more real instead of we're gonna rush to get to the end when a majority of our fan base because they played the video game already knows what the end is gonna be and to me it, it, 
they rushed this season. They rushed this story. And I was kind of disappointed in that. I love the characters. I love the story. I still think it's a great story. I still love the show, but they completely rushed it. And I think they had an opportunity to expand upon this story in a much greater way that they just kind of fell through. Biggest thing that I really got from this show, from this story, and I'll say the same thing about the game, is that it showed people that you are not meant to walk through this life alone. And this is such a biblical concept, but this is a true love story. Like, and I know that sounds like really, but this show really talks about like the need to love people, the need to have people to love, the need to be loved. Like we were created to love each other. And I think that this show explains that you are not meant to be alone. You have no idea what loss is. Everybody I have cared for has either died or left. Everybody except for you. So don't tell me that I'd be safe with somebody else because the truth is I would just be more scared. You have this girl that can save all of humanity. The weight in that decision is so great because you can justify Joel's decision on both sides. You can justify that it was right. You can also justify that it was wrong. I've done my best to try not to compare game to show, but we're gonna do that really quick. So if you haven't played the video game, part one and part two, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. If you have played the video games and you want to hear what I think comparatively to the game to the show adaptation, here we go. I, first of all, let's talk about the things I did like in the adaptation. I loved how we got to see Jackson. I thought that was so beautiful. I literally screamed when we got to see Jackson because I was not expecting that. The thing that I was expecting to sing was the dam because that was what was in part one. Jackson, the town, wasn't until part two. I loved how they brought it in now because it established Tommy's character that much more. It established this community that much more, and it allowed us to introduce Dina, which was a very small cameo, but I still loved it and I was not expecting it. And for The Last of Us video game fans, we know that Dina is a very important character. Going into the things that I wish they would have done differently. And I waited to talk about Marlene on purpose because Marlene is one of those characters that I really liked in the video game. But in the show, I feel like they really cheated her character and they made her a lot more cold hearted than she needed to be. She was someone who took Anne's daughter, Ellie, and was trusted to take care of her. And she seems very quickly to say, yeah, she needs to die. I don't believe that Marlene would make a decision that quickly. And I would have loved to seen Marlene in talking to the doctor in the same way that we got to see that scene in part two. But they had an opportunity to show that scene in part one because it took place before. And it just felt like they were trying so hard to replicate exactly from the game of everything we got to see in that order into the show. I feel like we don't need to see flashbacks. We don't need to see all these things. We can just tell a continuous story and we can add those scenes of Marlene and the doctor and Abby talking in a room together saying, should we allow this girl to die to save all humanity? Because that would have done three things. One, it would have opened up Marlene's character a whole lot more and not make her seem so heartless before she dies. Two, it would have set up the fact that the doctor dying is a very impactful thing going forward. And three, it would have set up Abby to be a potential villain. And if not, just a loose end for the next season. And that's like one of the things going into the finale of the show that when I watched the finale, I felt the same way I did when I finished the game for the first time. And I don't think that's a good thing. When I finished the game for the first time, I was like, dang, that was a lot. But that was a good story. All right, I'm done. They already 
went into this knowing they wanted to continue the story. Even if they didn't know it was going to get renewed, they should have... I feel like they were not confident. This is what it feels like to me. I have no idea, but it feels like that they were not confident that this show is going to get renewed. So they said, we're going to cram the entire first game into this nine episode season. So that way, if the show doesn't get renewed, at least we told the story. Instead, I really wish they were confident in the story that they had to allow this season to play out and for them not to be afraid to tell the whole story or to extend this season a little bit longer and to set up the fact that this is a story that they that needs to be continued. I felt like they weren't confident enough to do that. That being said, I did really love the show. I really loved this character. I really did love the show. The show made me cry a lot and I really do have a very strong love for the story. I just feel like this show is very rushed, but that's just my opinion. Well, let me know what you guys thought about this season. My favorite episode was Endurance Survive. Let me know what your favorite episode was. Like this video and share this with your friends if you enjoyed. Subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want more videos just like this. This has been Storybook TV. My name is JT. See you guys next time.